Tijuana, Baja. The demolisher of Tijuana, 34 knockouts with zero losses. <laughs> Jaime Munguia is now ready to taste the blood of Canelo Alvarez on May 4th at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. His bone-crushing punches always leave his opponents brutally injured, ending with his rival tasting the canvas. There's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of punches that Munguia can throw that can be very effective. Look, Munguia is a guy who knows he was born for this moment. On the 4th of May, that's going to be his, his moment right there against Canelo. The reason he consistently proves himself to be a beast in the ring is that he never dares to underestimate his opponents. Word on the street is that Canelo is avoiding David Benavidez and going for an easier opponent. But today, we're going to show you that Munguia has the guts to steal that super middleweight title from Canelo. This unbeaten power puncher is going to give Canelo the fight of his life, the toughest one he's had in the past three years. So to see how tough he is, let's figure out how much boxing runs in the veins of this Mexican fighter. I mean, his backstory, obviously. Jaime Munguia Escobedo was born in Tijuana, Mexico on October 6, 1996. His family completely shaped his boxing career, as he is the son of a heavyweight boxer and a favorite of the Mexican crowd, Jaime Rambo Munguia. So, like father like son at a very young age, Junior Munguia entered the ring. Munguia estimated that he was four or five years old when he first sparred. It seems he quickly realized his passion for throwing punches to the faces of other fighters. By the age of 10, he had his first amateur fight. Munguia has forged a solid career since his pro debut on July 13, 2013 in Tijuana, taking on Manuel Mora and knocking him out in just two rounds, securing his very first victory. I mean, that's a pretty impressive knockout for a 16-year-old kid. After that, he worked on his weaknesses one by one and got himself ready for the next hunt, which wrapped up when it was announced that Jaime had to go head-to-head -head with Paul Valenzuela. Thanks to his previous win, he scored his ticket to the United States, and this would mark his debut fight in North America. At the fight, Valenzuela seemed to be playing around with this Mexican monster at the start of the first round. Take a look at it. Va a ser interesante. Estos dos pugilistas ya se han uh, entrenado juntos. I don't know if Valenzuela was afraid to get closer to Munguia or was still mocking him like a fool, but one thing is certain. Valenzuela didn't connect with his opponent as his mind was distracted by the jokes outside the ring. Tomando su tiempo por parte del invicto de pantaloncillo negro, Jaime Munguia. In the second round, Munguia appeared focused and decided that it was time to score some points. With a powerful left hook, he showed his opponent that he was no match. Inteligente, el doble gancho de izquierda por parte de Munguia, el boxeador. ¡Oh! As you can see, Munguia began to get aggressive, leaving no chance for his opponent to hit back. That's just how Munguia is. Once he starts, there's no turning back, whether it's then or today. Once again, he knocked Valenzuela out cold, sending him crashing to the canvas. After that hit, Valenzuela seemed seriously hurt, like he had nothing left in his body after that second knockout. With this win, he showed that when he's in the ring, all he really wants is to stay in the ring. And like Munguia, we also want you to stay with our channel by smashing that like button on our video. All right, back to where we left off. Munguia's meteoric rise led him to score a straight 25 knockouts out of 28 wins. Now, the dude was all set to snatch his first world championship title. On 12th of May 2018, Jaime had to take on the undefeated Saddam Ali. For Saddam Ali against Jaime Munguia at 154 pounds. You see the eight. At that time, Saddam Ali was a favorite fighter among boxing fans, and Munguia was just the underdog. Munguia's supposed lack of experience boosted Ali's confidence. His pre fight mindset was clear. My plan is to take him to school, and I'm going to win. But sorry, Saddam, that night wasn't yours, because in the blink of an eye, Munguia's left uppercut silenced the entire arena. Saddam was on the canvas, the audience was confused, and Munguia knew exactly what he had just done. See, like that? Hard body shot by Munguia. Saddam tries to answer from a distance with the right hand. Once again, Munguia showed no mercy. He kept attacking with his majestic punches, leaving him no chance to at least stand. Oh, that right hand might have done it. Yep, that's true. As the number of rounds increased, Munguia's punches became even more deadly. And it was the fourth round when Munguia ended the bout with a technical knockout, and the referee called off the fight. I don't like it because it was Jesse Vargas dropping the That's got to be the end of the fight, and referee Gary Rosado. Munguia recalled, 
It was the first championship, so I was very happy about it. Well, you should be. Post-fight, Mungia explained, I don't know if it's my instinct or what it could be, but you'll notice when your opponent is hurt, you must finish him. Exactly. He maintains the same mindset before entering any fight. So there's no idea about what he'll prepare for his upcoming opponent, Canelo Alvarez. Watch Mungia fight and you'll quickly notice one of his standout qualities, his fighting style. While many boxers are aggressive, Mungia takes it to another level. There is a suddenness in how he fights, and that, I think, will be his plus point in facing Canelo. After conquering every challenge, Mungia became a household name, an undefeated champion with an incredible knockout rate. But let's not ignore the fact that as his fame grew, his opponents became tougher. His next rival was the British fighter Liam Smith. The only defeat he had was against Canelo Alvarez, in which the Mexican was the winner. And on this occasion, Smith was facing another Mexican. Let's see how the story will repeat itself. For Munguia, it was his first 12 rounds. He unleashed a furious two-fisted assault from bell to bell. Munguia says, come on, come on, give me a chance here. And the question now. He marched forward and banged Smith's body with left hooks to the midsection so hard you could feel them from ringside as they connected with a thunderous thud. But Smith hung tough and landed plenty of good shots of his own, including a left hook that staggered the title holder in round three. Are. Smith is landing the better shots. Smith had his left eye swelling by the end of round three, but Munguia again dominated the ring began landing power shots in the fourth round and kept it going in the fifth round, bouncing him off the ropes with a series of hard combinations. See why now. Munguia lands the left hook. Munguia wants to win championships across different weight divisions and leave his footprint on the history of boxing, and he wants to do it by fighting anyone and everyone. Oh, good uppercut. Then, with about 40 seconds left at the end of round six, Munguia landed an insane left hook to the side of the head that knocked Smith down. Munguia did badly hurt Smith in each round and retained his junior middleweight title with a unanimous decision victory. After this, Munguia fought many challenging boxers, always hungry to win. He faced Takeshi Inui, who had a 9% knockout percentage, then Gary Sullivan and Camille Sherometa. Munguia brutally injured Camille's face, as medical experts revealed. Then came one of the most competitive fights of Munguia's career against Sergei. Derevanchenko. At that time, Munguia had a record of 42-0 with 33 KOs. The fight was so tough that it would last 12 rounds. Munguia had a nightmare fest as he absorbed dozens of meaty headshots. Look at his face, all swell. But he also displayed incredible fighting guts and managed to maintain his unbeaten record courtesy of a body shot knockdown in the dying seconds of the fight. So yeah, that was so, so close. Maybe Munguia thought this would be like the usual fights, calm and straightforward. But this Ukrainian fighter was seriously aggressive, like crazy strong. He had way more experience and you could totally see it in this match. However, my point is, I mean Munguia always leaves his opponents in rough shape. In most of his fights, he's drawn blood from his rivals. He pulled off something that Canelo couldn't do, defeating John Ryder on January 27, 2024. That was always going to be a defining moment in Munguia's career, especially since John Ryder is widely regarded as a formidable champion. And now, Munguia will represent Alvarez's first Mexican opponent since Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in 2017. Rated at number four by ESPN, this title holder is ready for his next fight. Canelo Alvarez, better be ready to defend yourself from the crazy punches of the demolisher of Tijuana. Former world champion Chris Algieri believes the May 4th All-Mexican clash between Saul Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia could turn into a shootout. But with the finer details in place, Algieri looked ahead to the fight and told ProBox TV, Munguia is one of those guys who throws so much, he leaves a lot of holes, and the best version of Canelo counterpunches him and stops him, and he does it fairly easily. He's trying to suggest that facing Munguia's deadly blows, the 33-year-old boxer will not stand a chance. He further added, 33 is when things start going downhill for most guys, but also he's had a long career as well, and Munguia is approaching his physical prime, and it's going to be interesting how the power is going to affect Munguia early on, because there's going to be holes, there's going to be spots. Think back to Jaime Munguia's fights. How many times have you seen him trade left hooks and get cracked? He does that with Canelo, he's probably going to get hurt and hurt early on. So that's all about Munguia. All he has to do is keep winning, and I'm sure he will do it this time too. Let me know what you think about this epic showdown. 
drop your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't skip before subscribing to our channel.